Two beers from Fuller's. Which one's the best? Welcome to another edition of Bands, Bikes and Booze Reviews. A comparison video today, and this is an unusual one because it's a comparison video from, of two beers from the same brewery. I've never done this before because usually breweries don't brew two very, very similar beers. However, recently I reviewed the Fuller's London Porter, this one here, which was absolutely superb. I really did enjoy it. Wasn't the best porter I've ever tried, but it was good. And I have to say, there's a couple of other stouts and porters out here that are probably gonna be better than these two, but I did promise on that video that I would, at some point, do a comparison between the Black Cab Stout, which is this one, and the Fuller's London Porter. Now, as I say, they both come from the same brewery. They've got similar, but not identical brew sheets. Just in case you're wondering what that was, I've got two glasses here that I'm gonna try them out of. They're absolutely fucking filthy, but hey fucking ho. They're two craft beer glasses, and that's the amount of times I review craft beer on this channel now. But, I, as I said, I did wanna compare the two. Now, Fuller's are one of my favorite breweries of all time, and I was thinking about this today, and on or sort of in the grand scheme of things you have the big macro brewers Carlsberg, Marston's, um, Molson Coors, ABM Bev that brew on an absolutely massive scale. They really do produce a large volume of beer and then in my little tiny minds grading system you have the ones that are next the next level down from there so in that one I would include Shepherd Neem, Fuller's obviously, Adnams and I would do that on the premise that they produce a small range of beers that are of good quality. They also own a lot of pubs and generally are consistent in the quality of their beers. And Fuller's firmly belong there. Now, as you may or may not know, Fuller's are owned currently by Asahi and they have been, I think, since 2017. There are rumours that some of the recipes may have changed. I don't know, can't confirm. I'm gonna find out about London Pride, definitely. But I did try the Golden Pride last night. That video is up now. What a great beer that was. That was absolutely superb. Really did enjoy that. And it's just one of the few of the great beers that Fuller's produce. Now, if you want the ultimate, and I do mean the ultimate, English beer, then you have to try some of the Fuller's Vintage Ale. I've got one down there that I am at some point. I'm saying it's down there, where the fuck is it? Where did I put that beer? Hmm, is it down here? I don't know where the fuck that is. Now that's concerning. What did I do with that? Oh, booger. I didn't drink it, I know that. Did I put it, oh fuck here now, what a twat. This is what happens when you get old, all right? This is the kind of shit that goes in. You walk into a room and you forget what the fucking hell you went in there for. This is what I've got. It's right fucking beside me looking at me saying, I'm here, you twat. This is the 2021 Fuller's Vintage Ale. Now, they do a 2022, which I've given to, me, or I'm going to give to me mate, Norby, from Germany. This is a 2021 beer, and... These are bottle conditioned, so that's a year's worth of conditioning that's gone into that. Wonder what that will taste like. That review will be coming up soon. When, I don't know, because I may want to leave it in there a bit longer. If the urge becomes too great and I cannot resist, then I'll review it whenever that urge happens. 
but as I say, Fuller's really do some fantastic beers, and I have reviewed, I think, almost all of them. The only letdown, and I have reviewed this one as well, and that video may be up at some point in the near future, they do a Frontier Lager, and it just rubber stamped what I, I perceive to be the UK's lack of expertise when it comes to brewing lager. I just don't think we can do it. And it may be for a number of reasons. Maybe the water is the problem. Maybe we just simply don't know how to do it. Maybe it's the choice of hops. Now, if you're gonna use English hops in lagers, to be honest, I don't think they go that well. Certain ones don't anyway. I think for a decent lager, you have to have one of the four noble hops in there at least, and it has to be quite strong in there. So your four noble hops, in case you don't know, they're Sartz hops, Hallertauer, all the variations of the Hallertauer, uh, uh, Spalt hops, and also the Tetnang hops. Mittelfru is sort of in there as well, but it's not really, in my opinion, predominantly lager suited, if you know what I mean. So that may be the reason, but I did review the Frontier Lager and it didn't impress me. So I'm not going to spoil it for you, but keep an eye out for that and I'll give you my spiel on that one. And the reason I think they didn't get it right is because they used American hops and that is pure, I would say, I wouldn't say pressure, but it, I think it's, it's bowing down to the market, thinking that's what you have to do. And believe me, if English hops aren't suited to lager, then American hops really aren't suited to lager, in my opinion. It, it just changes the whole complexity of a lager. A lager should be easy drinking, quite clean. I wouldn't say minimal flavour, but non-obtrusive flavours. And as soon as, you put, <clears throat> as soon as you put American hops in, you completely change the the landscape now cloud water speaking of cloud water you know i've got one of their glasses here it is fucking filthy but there you go uh, cloud water used to do one called little hoppy lager and i knew what, i sort of knew what i was getting and i didn't actually mind that they had american hops in it you just have to think that you're not drinking a normal lager you have to steal yourself for american hops and to be honest i it might come across that i've got a big downer on american hops American hops are fine in the right context. It's when brewers start throwing them into lagers, English ales, and you just think, stop the fucking shenanigans right now. They don't belong in here. Stop it because you're creating a fucking monster that's got way out of control. <laughs> Fuck, like I've got any sway on anything here. But uh, I'm not gonna give you a rundown of the history of Fuller's because I've done it on so many other videos. If you do want that history, then please check out my other videos. But today, it's all about the stout. So let's stop gassing and let's pitch these against each other. Right, so let's start with the Black Cab first, right? Black Cab, obviously named after the iconic Black Cab that's, or the Black Cabs that are prevalent in London now. I've actually got a couple of mates who are cab drivers, both West Ham supporters. Got an opinion on everything. One of them's retired now, my mate Johnny. Good old boy he is. And uh, he's, he's in his 70s now, and he can match me drink for drink. He keeps up with me. He can actually walk faster than me. Still goes over West Ham. Still shouting and hollering at anyone who'll listen to him. Yeah, he's a great, great character, real nice bloke, and one of the funniest geezers I've ever met. Absolute razor sharp wit humour. Excellent, really funny guy. Anyway, I'm going off on a tangent here. This is a 500ml bottle, it's 4.5%. Uh, what does it say on the back? This is slightly cold, that's why I'm rubbing it. Let me let me get all the condensation off it, because I've taken these out of the fridge. Oh, fuck knows what this room is, honestly. It's like fucking Aladdin's cave. It's like Aladdin's cave before he got a storage unit. Let me just, because there's a lot of condensation off this. I've taken this out of the fridge, it is still I would say chilled at the moment, not the ideal temperature to be uh, comparing these beers, certainly not um, trying to get all the flavours, I mean if you want a refreshing beer, don't let anybody tell you that stout is not refreshing, it can be, I used to drink stout Guinness all the way through the, the summer, people used to give me funny looks, but 
I, I really don't see a problem with drinking stay out in the summer, but you know, some people think you, you can only drink light beers, but yeah, not really, uh, I'm not really a, a, a subscriber to that. But uh, what have we got on Black Cab Stout? Uh, named in honour of the iconic, and the icon of the capital, this aromatic dark beer will transport you to the days when porters and stouts were Londoners' drink of choice. This style of stout delivers a rich, full flavour from a chocolate malt in the brew, and balanced by fuggles and golden hops. I'll get onto them in a bit, creating a satisfying bitterness. Yeah, I'll um, compare the uh, brew sheets of both. That's one thing I really do like about Fuller's. They do give you a brew sheet for every beer, which is, for, for geeks like me, it really is um, interesting and a welcome addition. More brewers should take note. Uh, did I say it was 4.5%? I can't remember, it's a 500 ml bottle. I have reviewed this on the channel. This is potentially going to be a revisiting video because I've reviewed the Fuller's London Porter as well. Speaking of Fuller's London Porter, on the back, uh, London Porter takes its name from the porters who carried goods around the streets of London in the 18th century. The prize-winning beer brewed using pale crystal brown and chocolate malt combined with fuggles hops, giving a rich, dark and complex flavour London London Porter boasts wonderful chocolate note and a smooth was that, that fucking tell me that doesn't say I thought it said cataclysmic <laughs> oh, fucking what's happening to what's happening to Fuller's it's not it's is satisfying how the fuck did satisfying become cataclysmic you fucking blind moron shut your fucking mouth right comparing the brew sheets so let's go for the London Porter. London Porter uh, contains pale malt. That is the base malt that's on here. Uh, it contains crystal light. Now crystal light is a, a variety of malt, as the name would suggest. It is a type of crystal malt, but it's light in color. It's not roasted, and it does give it a slight toffee and biscuit style flavor in the beers that you use it. It doesn't really say that that sort of malt is suited for stout or porter, but they put it in there I can sort of see why. It all depends how much and what they were trying to go for in that. It contains brown malt. Now, if ever there was a malt that was suited for porter, porter and stout, then it is brown malt. Brown malt gives it its dark color, but it also gives it a coffee and a dried fruit style flavor as well. And that's been used in beers since the 17th century. And as they say, rightly say as well, porter is a London drink. And yes, you may say that stout is predominantly drunk in Ireland and you know, Guinness are synonymous with the word stout. However, it does originate in London. It is a London drink and it's a beer that has more or less remained popular, wars notwithstanding. And it has remained very popular indeed. Of course, it was Guinness who carried on that tradition and with the influx of Irish immigrants and I found a lot of Jamaicans liked Guinness as well and it's remained popular ever since and it's still popular to this day in London so yeah this is as much a part of London brewing history as any other beer well not as any other beer and more than any other beer I should say but that is the uh that is the malt bill on there. No, sorry, you, you have got some chocolate malt on there as well, and that's pretty self-explanatory. That does, Again, that does give you uh, a chocolate and coffee style flavors too. Again, perfectly suited to porter. And of course, brown malt and, and chocolate malt, it does give you a dark flavor as well because it is slightly roasted. Uh, the hops on here are Fuggles, and Fuggles, of course, have a woody and earthy type of flavor. Again, another English hop that is perfectly suited to English beers, as you would expect. You find Fuggles in almost all dark ales and in porters as well. It's a, just a, a really distinctive English style hop and that earthiness, the mustiness that comes from them hops is uniquely English. And yeah, you get um, Belgian brewers using Fuggles quite a lot in their dark beers too. It's, it's a great hop, it really is. Right, so now let's get on to Ye Olde Black Cab Stout. So the malts in here are a little a little bit different. You've got the pale crystal and chocolate malts. Uh, the crystal malt, I, I think, as far as I can tell from the brew sheet, is just normal crystal malt, not crystal light. 
You have Imperial Malt as well, but you've also got something called Golden Naked. Now, what is Golden Naked? Well, when you look at the brew sheet on the Fuller's website, it doesn't explain it, but all that is is basically oats that don't have a kernel around them. And oats, of course, do wonderful things for stouts and for certain beers as well. Uh, it's great for head retention and also giving the beer some body. But the Golden Naked oats are renowned for giving it like a creamy style flavour and finish to it, a feel to it as well, which again is perfect for a for, for a stout. Two hops they've got in here are Fuggles and Goldings. And again, they will give you some of the earthy notes I mentioned on the, on the London Porter. And the Goldings are quite spicy as well. So that'll give you a nice little bit of bitterness as well. And that's how a lot of the old Porters were were hopped back in the day as well. Now, there's a lot of crap being spouted about IPAs and stuff like that, but apparently at the same time, hops were used in abundance in stout as well. And it's one of the reasons why um, it was very popular and it also survived the journey to India. So again, <laughs> this rumor that IPAs were heavily hopped to survive the journey from India, I. I don't think that was the case. I don't think it would, they were specifically highly hopped to survive the journey from India. I just think they were highly hopped because hops were very much in vogue at the time. They were a new thing. You know, before then you had Gruet beer, which was basically anything went and uh, hops became a very nice addition and they became popular. And that's why we are where we are today with, with hops. But there you go. I am digressing. This is all about comparing these two, so let's get these open and checked out. Right, so how are we gonna do this? I will put the Fuller's Black Cab Stout in the Beer of the Gods, and I'll put the London Porter in the Cloud Water glass. Now these glasses are craft beer glasses, but they do have a nice sort of funnel, which is gonna help me get all the aromas. So I really want to do a good comparison of the two of these because I want to find out what is, if any, a dif the difference between the two. What is the discernible differences? The caps are both the same on here, both black Fuller's caps. I do like that. G Griffins on them. The Griffin, of course, denoting the Griffin Brewery, or it's a tribute to the Griffin Brewery. These glasses are quite dirty, so I'm not sure how long the head's gonna last on this. So I'm gonna give it quite a big head. Looks nice, I have to say. Very dark, um, almost impenetrable. Can't see any ruby in that whatsoever. And they said black cab, that was very up your nose. Oh, I can smell that for me, that smells fucking gorgeous. Let's get the porter in. Now I tried this recently, this is a fantastic beer. It really is good. Didn't get a 10 out of 10 from me, but it was a solid eight and a half. I really did enjoy it. For me, the ultimate, as I've mentioned on the others, is the uh, the Shepherd Name Double Stout. Now look, look, can you see that? The difference in the head styles on these two. The the stout has big, raucous bubbles in a in a with a beige sort of tan head. This. London Porter has a very, very light tan, but tightly compact bubbles in there. Uh, aroma, this is the Black Cab London Stout. Nice. Big coffee, bitter, Ch bitter coffee and chocolate. Espresso, I think they call, call that type of flavor. I'm not a massive fan of coffee. I will drink coffee, but for me, it's tea all day long. But yeah, that's, that's what I'd expect from a, a quality stout. Very, very bitter, very coffee, dark chocolate, that type of thing, and not much else. Of course, that's coming from that roasted brown and chocolate malt on here. The London Porter, slightly sweeter. That's the difference. And where it, probably where it's got that crystal light malt on it that's giving it a little bit more of a, a sweeter type less intense than that that's really bitter that is 
yeah, that is roasted beans, coffee beans, if you can imagine that. And sort of roasted pepper as well. A little experiment to try. If you ever try roasting peppercorns and you get the smell of pepper from that, it, it does intensify it. And, you know, if you're going to be cooking stuff, I'd always suggest roasting the peppercorns first because it does really bring out them spicy flavours. And, yeah, I'm getting... <clears throat> I'm getting much more bitter intensity from the stout than I am from the porter. The porter is similar, but not as not as extreme. And there's a little element of sweetness in there. When I say sweetness, I'm talking relative sweetness. It it doesn't smell sweet, but compared to the the black cab stuff, that is very sweet. I'm just going to top these heads up again. Now there is a difference in the ABV. So the head on the porter, which is a stronger one. It's probably going to dissipate quicker. Have I put too much in there? No, I haven't. No, that's perfect. Right, so I'm going to get the black cab down my Gregory Peck. Good health. Oh, yeah. Very very bitter, um, quite flavour intense. Now comparing it to Guinness, that has got a hundred times more intense roasted flavour. Guinness I find, compared to these type of beers, I find Guinness to be quite mild, quite sessionable when it comes to flavour. Um, people who aren't used to Guinness will always say it's got a heavily roasted flavour, but when you compare it to stuff like this, Guinness is actually quite sessionable. The mouthfeel on this is slightly weak, which again is something I would expect in a stout because Guinness is like that as well. But it's nice though, nice intense flavours. There's no lack of flavour in there, if you know what I mean. Uh, let's go for the porter now. Yeah, the porter is much more refined. Um, you, you can see that by the colour. And I showed you the other, the other beer. This one, I don't think you're going to be able to see it, but there's, there's more of a ruby colour. And I think this is a little bit more complex. More complex, smoother, with a, a subtle sweetness to it as well, which takes that extreme edge that you've got on the Black Cab Stout. It really is a nice beer, this London Porter. And uh, at 5.2%, oh, no, sorry, 5.4%, I lie. It's a, uh, I wouldn't say it's a session beer, but I could drink quite a few of these. Lovely and smooth. And of course the head does give that away. The, the head on this is very reminiscent of the head that you would get on a bottle of Guinness Original. I find that it's got them huge bubbles and that tan head. Uh, let's dive into the, the black cab. Yeah. Much, much more bitterness on there. Coffee bitterness and roasted bean bitterness, roasted malt bitterness. You know that, I wouldn't say you like ashtray type flavour, which you do get on certain um, certain stouts that I've tried, but th there's, this is more rough around the edges, if you know what I mean. Uh, the mouthfeel is not as smooth as the London Porter. Uh, the flavours are much more extreme, not refined. This is like, this is the equivalent of, I don't know, this is like, this tastes like working class beer. This tastes like middle class beer, if you can imagine that. Now, that's a very, very poor analogy, probably patronising as well. But this is, I wouldn't say it's rough around the edges, but it's, it's not as balanced and it's not as smooth as the London Porter. Nice though, it is nice, I will say that. It still doesn't come up to 
the levels of bitterness and extremities that you do get from the Shepherd Neen double stout. But um, it's, it's a nice stout and it's well worthy of the classification of being a stout because you do get all the characteristics of a good stout. Now this Porter is uh, a really nice one. I do like this. Much more smoother, more refined. Um, it's like the edges have been polished off. You do get some of the the roasted notes, the coffee notes, and a little bit of the chocolate on there. But it's just, how can I put it? It's more balanced. Um, that's what I'm trying to sort of get across. And uh, it's a really nice beer, I have to say. Now, both of these beers are chilled. I would say that they're at the level that you would get a cold Guinness in a pub. And what I wanna do is, I wanna leave them for a bit to warm up slightly, because I, as I say, I've taken these out of the fridge, I've been gassing for quite a long time, and I wanna let them warm up. So I'm gonna give them about five, five, 10 minutes. I'll be back presently, then I'll give you another rundown of the flavors, because I'm probably gonna get some more flavors with the temperature being a little bit higher than it is, because that's, I would say, a little bit a little bit cold. Right, it has been about 10 minutes. I can feel that these two have warmed up significantly. Uh, the head has dissipated, that's sort of expected. Um, I'm gonna dive in again. The weird thing is, I've been drinking more of the Black Cab Stout than I have of the, uh, of, of the London Porter. Hmm, why is that? I don't know, weird. Oh, again, and I'm going to make this point, and I've, I've made this point so many times, but I really do want to hammer this home, how important it really is to drink beer at the right temperature. Now, obviously, these beers <coughs> are top fermented ales, effectively, and top fermented ales should be drank around cellar temperature. I think this is more or less around cellar temperature. I'd say this is a winter time cellar temperature and the amount of flavors you get when it's served at the right temperature really does differ from when you drink it cold cold or the cold will disguise a hell of a lot of flavors and i'm getting much more complex flavors from this now and uh, i'm gonna have to investigate this a little bit further because before i was saying this was a little bit extreme and it is i won't say extreme but the flavors are much more pronounced maybe extreme isn't the right adjective but i think i'm getting more of the, the hop character on there now there's a an almost spiciness to it now which i wasn't getting before and these are the type of flavors that get disguised when you drink a beer that is colder than the recommended temperature that you should be drinking it at and yeah there's a bit more of the hop character coming through now and on these on the um on on the black cab i should say there's two hops you've got the fuggles and you've got the goldens as well and the spiciness from them certainly from the um from the fuggles And the spiciness, certainly from the Goldings, really is sort of kicking in now. Mmm, yeah. And that might explain why this tastes a little bit more rounded, because there are no Goldings on this, there's only Fuggles. Fuggles don't have a spicy character to them, not normally. It's more floral, slightly fruity as well. And... That's the difference. Mm. Really, that is really nice. I have to say, that is a supreme porter. And I, I gave that an eight, eight and a half out of 10. And I was comparing it to the, uh, the Shepherd Neem double stout. And I'm wondering whether I should have done that. I mean, effectively, Stouts and porters, I I really can't tell the difference. I think it's just just a name, and I think I think I'm probably 
I've probably done it a little bit of a disservice. I think it deserves a little bit higher, probably a nine, because this really is a nice beer. It's this is really weird because I've been, I wouldn't say caning the, the black cab, but I've been drinking more of that. And by rights, the, in my opinion, the London Porter is a little bit more drinkable. So I'm not sure why I'm sort of guzzling the, the, the black cab and sort of taking me time with this. I'd say, and I'm going to reiterate this point, this is much more rounded, it's smoother, and it's a little bit more complex. There are certain sweet elements in this that I'm really getting now. And it really does, it really does elevate this to be in the better beer. And I'm going to come back to my point again about saying this is the rough around the edges in your face stout and this is the slightly more refined connoisseur's porter if you like now that sounds fucking pretentious i know but it's i think fuller's got all all bases covered with this if you like your your stouts a little bit smooth and to be honest i think if you're a guinness fan you're probably going to prefer the london porter this may be a little bit too extreme if you do like the shepherd name double stout then this isn't i don't think as intense but it's it's on the way and that's what it's it's trying to do so maybe fullers have defined the differences between porter and stout so, to be honest though that's just fullers um if you tried the taddy porter from sam smith's that that has got a, a fair amount of invert sugar in it from what i remember i haven't drank that in a long time i should really get a bottle of that and compare it to the to the fuller's london porter that would be a good comparison but two great breweries as well but as far as the stout is concerned it's weird i prefer the london porter but i keep going back to the the black cab stout i don't know why that is i think it's because of the the big bold flavors that you get from this i don't know do i prefer extreme extremes when it comes to flavor well yeah probably i don't you know i who doesn't like big flavors but i think as long as the flavors are good you know that's that's a given but for me i think that the london porter just edges it for me i think there's there's more refined flavors it's higher in the abv but it's just it's just smoother it's got a, a slightly sweeter undercurrent compared to this this is all about the bitterness the the coffee bitterness and the, the dark chocolate bitterness this is as i say it's more refined a little bit more complex smoother mouthfeel definitely and to be fair more body to it as well and yeah i think the for me personally i think the london porter is the one for me compared to the the black cab stout but the black cab stout for some reason it's good it, and, it, and it keeps me wanting to try it and and drink it again. I wouldn't say it's Moorish. I don't know what it is. I can't put my finger on it, but I just want to keep drinking it. And again, it's warming up even more now. And it's becoming smoother. I still say it hasn't got the body that the London Porter has, but that's really nice. It is a nice stout. I am not denying that at all. That is a really nice one, but I still think the London Porter for me is the is the winner. Yeah, it's just got more going for it and I prefer the more rounded flavours of this. So yeah, for me, the London Porter is the winner.
So what's the verdict on these two then? The Fuller's London Porter and the Fuller's Black Cab Stout. Well, they are two great beers. There is no question about that. I like these beers. Both of them have their good points. I will say, all around, flavour, body, drinkability, ABV, if that's a thing for you, then the Fuller's London Porter does win. And when I've tried this first, I was really impressed and I gave it an 8.5. The second time I'm drinking this now, I realise how good a beer this is. And maybe I should have given that a higher mark because this is good, don't get me wrong. But this is, this is stout in its, in its pure aggressive form. And it's, it's on a, I wouldn't say it's on a par, but it's, it's of the same ilk as the Shepherd Neem Double Stout. I compared that to the Shepherd Neem Double Stout and I was right when I said it didn't have the intense flavors. This does have intense flavors. I still don't think, and I'm doing this from memory and I shouldn't really compare beers from memory. Maybe another comparison video, I don't know, but that's a good beer. I do like it. And the weird thing is, as intense and extreme as the flavours are, when I tried the Shepherd Neem Double Stout, I did say that this one beer would do me because the flavours were so big on it. I, could, I think I could drink a couple of these or possibly even a few. It's, it's got that flavour, but there's something about it and I don't know what it is. It keeps making me want to drink it. And yeah, it's, it's just full of flavour. Now, I mentioned this before, if you're a fan of Guinness, I think you're going to prefer the London Porter. That may be a little bit too bitter. You may find it a little bit, a little bit full on. That's the black cab I'm talking about. Uh, and I've, I've seen this before when I've gone into years ago, when I was an ardent Guinness drinker, I went into Sam Smith's pub. Uh, probably the first time I went into a Sam Smith's pub actually and I asked for, um, or I asked me mate, where's the Guinness? And he said, they don't do Guinness in here, they do their own, they do their own stout. And I tried, it was either the Taddy Porter or the Imperial Stout. And I found it really, really hard going because it, the flavours were just so big. And I reiterate my point about Guinness having what people who aren't used to drinking stout they may think that that is really an intense, bitter flavour that you get from Guinness. Guinness is actually quite sessionable. The flavours aren't big on it. It's the perfect session stout, in my opinion. And these two are on another level when it comes to flavour. This is more rounded. It's slightly more complex. It's got more body to it, more body than the Guinness has as well. And I think if you... I, should, I meant the London Porter. I'm holding the fucking black cab and I'm saying, yeah, the London Porter is more rounded, it's more more complex, and the body on it, if you compared this and Guinness, you'd say that this has got more body to it. But it's supremely drinkable. I really do like this. Yeah, and it's like a it's like a toned down sanded down polished version of the black cab stout but it's really nice i really do like i like them both but for me i think the winner is the fuller's london porter i gave that an eight and a half in the last review i think i should have possibly given it a nine or maybe even a nine and a half that is a really really nice beer this is a good this is a solid eight out of ten all day long but that edges it for me i think it's just it's just got more about it and if you're a if you're a fan of guinness or you're an ardent guinness drinker why not try some of that tell me what you think if you do if you do drink london porter let me know in the comments because again i'm always willing to li listen to people's opinions because at the end of the day, these are my opinions. They're not gospel, they're not fact. I keep saying this in videos, but I need to hammer this home because people think, or some people judging by the comments, I've had a few 
narky comments of um, some viewers who said, well, I think this beer's shit and, you know, you don't know what you're talking about and all that. Well, you know, you can say that about anything. Beer, just like music, is subjective. What you might like, I won't like, and what I like, you may not like. There is no right and wrong answer. It's an art. Brewing's an art. Music is an art. Art is an art. There is no right and wrong answer. It's all about appreciation and subjectivity. So get off your high horses. <laughs> but if you're talking about French beer, then you can fuck off. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, so final word. That, I think, is a 9.5 out of 10. That is an 8 out of 10. Two great beers. You're not going to go wrong with either one. But for me, the London Porter is just, in my opinion, the better beer. For me, anyway. Let me know what you think in the comments. And remember, beer is working class champagne. Like and subscribe. What a puppy gets it. Isn't that right, Purse? Yeah, get off. <laughs>